Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world. This is a Cube Conversation. Hi, and welcome to a special Cube Conversation. I'm Stu Miniman, and we're digging into VMware's vSphere 7 announcement. Uh, we've had conversations with some of the executives, some of the technical people, but we know that there's no better way to really understand a technology than to talk to some of the practitioners uh, that are using it. So really happy to have joined me for the program. I have Phil Buckley Meller, who is an infrastructure designer with British Telecom, joining me uh, digitally from across the pond. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Stu. All right, so Phil, uh, let, let's start. Uh, of course, uh, British Telecom, I think most people know, you know what BT is, and it, it's a you know, really sprawling company. Um, tell us a little bit about you know, your group, uh, your role, and uh, what, what, what's your mandate? Okay, so um, my group is called Service Platforms. It's the bit of BT that services all of our uh, multi-millions of our customers. So they, uh, we have broadband, we have TV, uh, we have mobile, uh, we have DNS and email systems, and, and, and it's all about our customers. Uh, uh, it's not a B2B part of BT, you with me. We, uh, we specifically uh, focus on uh, those kind of multi-million customers that we've got in those various services. Uh, I mean, in particular, uh, my group is for, uh, we, we do infrastructure, so we really do from uh, data center all the way up to really about boot time or so, or just past boot time, uh, and the application developers look after that stage uh, and above. Okay, great. We, we definitely are going to want to dig in and talk about that uh, that boundary between the infrastructure teams and, and the application teams. Um, but let's talk a little bit first, uh, you know, we're talking about VMware. So, you know, how long has your organization been doing VMware? and uh, tell us, you know, you, what you see uh, with the announcement that VMware is making for vSphere 7. Sure, well, I mean, we've had a really great relationship with VMware for about 12, 13 years, something like that. Um, and it's a absolutely key part of our, uh, of our infrastructure. Um, it's written throughout BT, really, uh, in every part of our, of our operations, design, uh, development, and, uh, the, the whole ethos of the company is based around a lot of VMware products. Um, and so one of the challenges that we've got right now is the application, application architectures are changing quite significantly at the moment. And uh, as you know, in particular with uh, serverless and with containers and a whole bunch of other things like that, we're uh, very comfortable with our ability to manage VMs and have been for a while. Um, we currently use extensively, we use vSphere, NSXT, vROPS, Log Insight, Network Insight, and a whole bunch of other uh, VMware Constellation applications. And um, our operations teams know how to use that, they know how to optimize, they know how to capacity plan um, and troubleshoot. Uh, so that's that's great. And that's been like that for uh, half a decade at least. We've been really, really confident with, with our ability to deal with VMware environments. Um, and along came uh, containers and like I say, uh, multi-cloud as well. And what we were struggling with was the inability to have a single pane of glass really on all of that and to use the same uh, people and the same processes to manage a different kind of technology. So we, uh, we've we been working pretty closely with VMware on uh, a number of different containerization products uh, for several years now. I've worked really closely with the vSphere integrated containers guys in particular, and now with the Pacific guys, um, with really the ideal that when we uh, we bring in version seven and the containerization aspects of, of version seven, we'll be in a position to have that single pane of glass to allow our operations team to really barely differentiate between what's a VM and what's a container. That's really the holy grail, right? So yeah. we'll be able to allow our developers to develop, our operations team to deploy and to operate, and our designers to see uh, the same uh, infrastructure, whether that's on-premises, cloud, or off-premises, uh, and be able to manage the, the whole piece in, in that respect. Okay, so Phil, really interesting things you walked through here. You've been using containers in a virtualized environment for a number of years. Yeah. Want to understand in the organizational piece just a little bit because it sounds great. I manage all the environment, but you know, containers are a little bit different than VMs. You know, if I think back, you know, from an application standpoint, it was, you know, let's stick it in a VM. I don't need to change it. And once I spin up a VM, 
often that's going to sit there for you know months, if not years, as opposed to you know I, I think about a containerization environment. It's you know I really want a pool of resources. I'm going to create and destroy things all the time. Uh, so you know bring us inside that organizational piece. You know how much will there need to be interaction and more interaction or change in policies between your infrastructure team and your app dev team? Well, yes, I mean, you're absolutely right that um, the, the nature and the, the timescales that we're talking about between VMs and containers is wildly different. As you say, we, we probably almost certainly have uh, VMs in place now that were in place in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2018, certainly, I imagine, um, that haven't, haven't really been touched. Whereas, as you say, VMs, um, a lot of people talk about spinning them all up all the time. Uh, there are parts of our architecture that, are, that require that, um, in particular the very client-facing, bursty stuff. It, you know, does require um, spinning up, spinning down pretty quickly. But um, some of our some of our other containers do sit around for weeks, if not if not months. Uh, it really does depend on the development cycle aspects of that. But um, the, the hard bit that we've we've really had was just the visualizing it. Um, there are a number of different uh, products out there that allow you to uh, see the behavior of your uh, containers and understand the resource requirements that they are having at any given moment, allow you to troubleshoot and, and so on. But they are not, they're new, they're new products, they're new things that we, uh, we would have to get used to. And also it seems like there's an awful lot of competing products, um, quite a Venn diagram of, in terms of uh, functionality and user uh, 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 abilities to, to do that. So. For again, again, coming back to, to being able to manage through vSphere, um, to be able to have a list of VMs and alongside it is a list of containers and to be able to use policies to define how they behave in terms of their networking, uh, to be able to essentially put our deployments uh, on rails by using uh, in, in particular tag-based uh, policies um, means that we can take the onus of security, we can take the onus of uh, performance management uh, and capacity management away from the developers who don't really care about that a lot of the time and they can um, just get on with their job which is to develop new functionality and help our customers so that then means that then we have to be really responsible about defining those policies and making sure that they're adhered to but again we know how to do that with vms through vSphere so it, the fact that we can actually apply that straight away just to a slightly different compute unit which is really what we're talking about here, um, is ideal. And then to be able to extend that into uh, multiple clouds as well, because we do use multiple clouds, we're AWS and, and Azure customers uh, and uh, work between them, is um, an opportunity that we can't do anything other than be you know excited about and to take up. Yeah, Phil, I, I really like how you described really the changing roles that are happening there in your organization, need to understand, right, there's things that developers care about, you know, they want to move fast, they want to be able to build new things, and there's things that they shouldn't have to worry about. And, you know, we talk about some of the new world, and it's like, oh, can the platform underneath just take care of it? Well, there, there's some things platforms take care of, there's some things that the software or, you know, your team is going to need to understand. So, um, Maybe if you could dig in a little bit, uh, some of those, what are the drivers from your application portfolio? What is the business asking of your organization that, that's driving this change and uh, you know, b being one of those uh, you know, tailwinds pushing you towards you know, Kubernetes and the, the vSphere 7 technologies? Well, it all comes down to the customers, right? Our customers uh, want new functionality, they want new integrations, they want new content, uh, they want better stability and better performance, uh, and our ability to extend or, or, or contract in uh, capacity as needed as well. So th they're the real ultimate challenges that, that we want to give our customers the best possible experience of our products and services. So we have to ha address that really from a development perspective. It's our developers that, that uh, have the responsibility to uh, to design and deploy those. So we have to, in infrastructure, we have to act as a, a firm uh, foundation, really, underneath all of that, that allows them to know that what they uh, spend their time and develop and want to push out to our customers is something that can be trusted, is performant. We understand where the capacity requirements are coming from in the, in the short term and in the long term for that, and is secure as well, obviously, um, is a big aspect to it. Um, so really, we're just providing our developers with the best possible chance of giving our customers what will hopefully make them delighted. Great.
Uh, Phil, you've mentioned a couple of times that you're using public clouds as well as uh, yeah. you know your 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 your, your VMware farm. Um, Want to make sure I, uh, if you can explain a little bit uh, a couple of things. Number one is uh, when it comes to your team, especially your infrastructure team, how much are they involved uh, with setting up some of the, the the basic pieces or managing things like performance in the public cloud? And secondly, when you look at your applications, are some of your clouds, some of your applications hybrid, going between the data center and the public cloud? And I haven't talked to too many customers that are doing applications that just live in any cloud and move things around, but you know, maybe if you could clarify those pieces as to you know, what cloud really means to your organization and your applications. Sure, well, I mean, to us, cloud uh, allows us to accelerate development, which is nice because it means that we don't have to do on-premises uh, capacity uplifts for new pieces of functionality or so. We can initially build in the cloud and test in the cloud, but very often applications really make better sense, especially in the TV environment where people watch TV all the time. Um, I mean, yes, there are peak hours and, and uh, lighter hours of TV watching. Same goes for broadband, really. Uh, but we generally, we're, we're a, well, more than an eight hour application uh, profile. So what that allows us to do then is to have applications that uh, when it makes sense, we run them inside uh, our organization where we have to run them in our, our organization for you know data protection reasons or whatever, then we can do that as well. But where we say, for instance, we have a boxing match on and we're going to be seeing an enormous spike in the amount of customers that want to sign up into our order journey for uh, to allow them to view that and to, to gain access to that. Well, why would you spend a lot of money on uh, servers just for that level of uh, additional capacity? So we do absolutely have hybrid uh, applications, not necessarily hybrid blocks. We have blocks of sub applications, um, you know, dozens of them really to, to support our whole platform. And what you would see is that if you were to look at our full application st uh, structure for one of the platforms that I mentioned, that some of the uh, some of those application blocks have to run inside, some can uh, run outside. And what we want to be able to do is to allow our operations team to define that again by policy as to where they run and to um, you know, have a system that allows us to transparently see where they're running, how they're running, and the implications of, of those decisions so that we can tune those maybe in the future as well. Um, and that way we best serve our customers we, uh, you know, we we get to uh, get our customers, yeah, uh, what they need. All right, great, Phil. Final question I have for you: You've been through uh, you know, a few iterations of looking at uh, VMs, containers, public cloud. Uh, what what advice would you give your peers uh, with the announcement of vSphere Seven and how they can look at uh, things today in 2020 versus what they might have looked at? say a year or two ago? Well, I'll be honest, I was a little bit surprised by vSphere 7. We knew that VMware were working on um, trying to make containers um, on the same level, both from a management deployment um, perspective as VMs. I mean, they're called VMware after all, right? Um, we knew that they were looking at, at, um, at that, but I was surprised by just quite how quickly they've managed to almost completely reinvent their application, really. Um, it's, you know, if you look at the whole Tanzu stuff and the mission control stuff, um, I think a lot of people were blown away by just quite how happy VMware were to reinvent themselves from an application perspective, you know, um, and to really leap forward. And this is, the, the ver between version six and seven, I've, I've been following these since version three at least, and it's an absolutely revolutionary change in terms of the overall architecture, uh, the aims to, to to what they want to achieve with the application. Um, and, you know, luckily the nice thing is, is that if you're used to version six, it's not that big a deal. It's really not that big a deal to move forward at all. It's not such a big change to process and, and, and uh, training and things like that. But my word, there's an awful lot of work underneath that. Uh, underneath the covers and I'm really excited and I think other people in my position should really just take it as an opportunity to revi well, revisit what they can achieve with um, in particular with vSphere and with in combination with uh, NSXT it's um, it's you know it's, it's quite hard to put into place unless you've seen the slide 
slides about it and you, unless you've seen the product just how revolutionary the, the version 7 is compared to previous versions which have kind of evolved for a couple of years um so yeah i think i'm really excited about it and i know a lot of my uh peers or other companies that i speak with uh, quite often are very excited about 7 as well um so yeah i i i'm, I'm really um excited about the whole the whole piece well, Phil, thank you so much. Absolutely, no doubt this is a huge move for VMware. The entire uh, company and their ecosystem rallying around help move to the next phase of, of where uh, application developers and infrastructure need to go. Phil Buckley joining us from British Telecom. I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you so much for watching theCUBE.